Philly's Power 99, yours truly, DJ Doc B. And I got my man, the man of the hour, yeah. Philly Zone, Meek Mill. Meek, what up? Yo, what's up? What's poppin'? Philly, what's up? Look, man, welcome home. You know, we consider this home. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. It's definitely home for sure. We remember you sneaking in here. Actually, I used to live across the street from right here, too. Wow. This really was home. So bro. you really are home. Yeah, for real. Look, man, so let me ask you straight off the gate. Meek Mill. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great right now. Championships just dropped. I'm feeling super good. Right? Family's good? Yeah, family great. Everybody doing good. Uh, except I'm probably my friends in jail. Free all my dogs. Okay. Uh, but everything great on this side. All right, dope. I got a question. Yeah. So so I've been thinking. It's just me. Yeah. So, you know, you were at a low place. Yeah. And now you seem to be on top of the world yeah. very quickly. W- what's that like? Uh, you know, I think life is just based on ups and downs. I don't think nobody lives life. You have some bad days when you come to work, right? Right, right, yeah, right. And, uh, but I, I don't end up on Ellen. And then <laughs> I don't end and, up on Ellen. And sometimes, like we 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 set the bar so high for ourselves that when it was when it was low for me, I still was making millions of dollars and right. I'm still able to provide for my family. But right. I've been lower than that. You know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying I've been not having no money. I've been having my freedom stripped from me. So right. you know, uh. Just going up and down is is definitely a, a hell of a ride. I would call it a, a a roller coaster ride. I like that. You know, me personally, I like how you always, you know, you do what you do, but you always maintain that you're providing for your family, yeah. you're doing for your people and stuff like that. I think that's real important. That's the main goal, though. I only came in this to, uh, I love the art of music, but I came in this to move my family out of the environment they're in and uh, mm-hmm. create a better living for my family, you know right. what I'm saying, and, and do it for my last name. So so let me ask you this. So this is the thing, and, it, and this is just me. So, yeah. like, I'm a football fan. Like, I'm a dude, and I hang out with football people. Yeah. People like Robert Kraft. Yeah. What's it like that Robert Kraft, like, you hang with Robert Kraft and, and owner of the Sixers and, 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 and people like that. What's that like? Uh, it's inspiring to me to be around wealthy people, period. Right. Yeah, you know, you know people that's in the billions and people that got that type of money and people who built empires like that. Right. Uh, it's inspiring to me. It's motivating, and, and it's kind of different. It's unique to somebody, a young black kid from North Philly, to have friends like that. Right. But you know, we bridging gaps and we changing the game. They genuine people. Right. I'm a genuine person, and we all we really proud of ourselves off of hanging around people who got good hearts and, and stuff like that. And I think that's important because people that come from where you come from, people that come from where I come, uh, yeah. normal everyday people, they can't even imagine being next to or having a conversation with people like that and i think that's big that's important yeah when you do that yeah and i learn a lot and i and i learn a lot from them guys because we come from two different different mm-hmm. worlds you know they grew up in business uh i grew up in survival it was right. like two different worlds but you know we all still good people and you know we got good we all learn from each other we give good conversation and we learn from each other a lot that's dope man that's incredible so look let's get to this music Let's get yeah. the champion. Let's let let's get to it. All yeah. right. How you feel about the album? Uh, I feel great about the album. I feel like the album is balanced. I feel like I got all types of music on there. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes people don't like to hear. I like to rap about really like pain and going mm-hmm. the streets and really cater to my fan my fan base, which I started from the bottom of Philly with. And then you know, sometimes I like to go in the club. Sometimes I like to. You know, talk bars. I like to really rap. Sometimes I like to bounce on the beat. So, mm-hmm. you know, I had to, like, just find a balance where I could try to please a bunch of people at one time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, congratulations on, yeah. on Dangerous, on that number one. Oh, yeah. Congratulations Thank you too. on yeah. that, too. Shout out to PNB Rock, too. PNB Rock and, uh, and Jeremiah on, on Dangerous. It, it just went number one. And uh, basically, I'm grateful just to be in this position, how I've always been coming up. Uh, through the highs and lows, you know, anything could change tomorrow. You know, I've been on private just today and then jail cells the next day. So, you know, I understand that things could change and stay humble, get money, feed your family and do what you do. Love it. Love it. So let me ask you, let's talk about this. Yeah. The album. Yeah. Let's start with the intro. Yeah. So do you make it a, a, a priority to just have a fire intro? Like, does it just happen naturally or do, yeah, I make do, it a do priority, you make it a priority? When I learned from somebody uh, before, it was like when you handing out your demo, because this before like the internet, we had to hand out our demos right. and take them personally. Like, yo, you should try to make your first song 
your best song because most people, if they don't know you, they're going to pop your CD in for about 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. And after 20 seconds, they might throw your CD out the window. And I had my CD thrown out the window sometimes by my favorite rappers. Well, people I thought was my favorite rappers <laughs> threw my CD out the window. So I always made it a point to make my first impression, the mm -hmm. first 20 seconds or the first song on my uh, album just dope. I always wanted to do that. The Phil Collins joint was that your idea? Yeah, that was my idea. I okay. love Phil Collins song. Like I just, it's just like a feel good. I feel like that's a championship song. Like right, a song right. you play after you win a championship. If it ain't the intro, uh, it's a song you wake up and feel good and get dressed to. So I wanted to put a. Uh, uh, a Philly mix on that, like a Philly hood mix on you that. You got that off. Yeah, your, your intro game is crazy. Yeah, your thank intro you. I game appreciate is crazy. it. No problem. So let's go to Trauma. Yeah. Trauma. So real deep. Yeah. Feels real deep. That that was your story? Yeah, that was my story of what I've been through uh, basically uh, coming up or what I've seen in and out of prison. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about guys in there. Like when I say, like, you got guys we may have looked up to our whole life where their life got contained to, like, having to work for the system. Like, I did an interview with uh, CNN today. It was like, how you consider it slavery? I'm like, they got grown men working for eight cents an hour. You know nah, what I'm saying? Nah, like, nah, you're right. You can't even, they got people working for big companies for mm -hmm. eight cents an hour where you can even be working and making, earning money and paying back your dues to society. The lives mm -hmm. you probably messed up or the things you did wrong, they don't do that. You got They got you working for eight cents an hour. So It's modern day slavery, is like you said, right? Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, definitely. And so I rap about the experience of people not being able to call a son or daughter, wish them on prime, and the trauma that we go through coming up in this street life that uh, we was born into and a, and a lifestyle we used to praise so much. Well, a lifestyle that I used to praise that I mm -hmm. thought was the dopest lifestyle in the world, but it was short-lived and it was only d disastrous for most of the people I know. So, you know, I just wanted to give people the different layers of what goes on in these lanes. In some of your previous interviews, you, you talk a lot how you like to uh, 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 speak to the kids yeah. and give them an example and stuff like that. So you feel like it's real important that these messages come from you because they're going to be received from you versus like somebody else or something else. Yeah, I just think that... Uh a lot of these kids see me, they watch me grow up and mm -hmm. make it to this point where I'm at. So they probably believe that, uh, they believe in me a certain way. They, right. they listen to me a certain way. So, you know, it's a lot of things I be having to say that, uh, that I grew up on, that that I be seeing. I'm, I may have fell victim to at some points in my life. We talking Percocets, getting high off opioids. And mm -hmm. now that I'm balanced out, I can speak on these things and really... And talk to them from an experience level. Like, I experienced. I know what you're going through. I know what you've been through. I know how it felt. Uh, you know what I'm saying? What stage you might be in your life. And they could really feel me more because they know that I'm experienced in the things I'm speaking on. I right. can talk to them about uh, going to prison and staying out of prison or getting out of prison and staying out of prison because they know I've been in that situation before. So I feel like I got the reach to actually touch some of these younger guys and, and really explain like almost like a, a manual book because a lot of these manuals need to be updated a lot of people still going off the rules from back in the day some of them rules was made up by ignorant people you know what i'm saying people right. who wanted to go their way and a lot of them rules don't even make sense when it comes to survival and actually growing and the world is different right now yeah. we live in a different time just when it comes to survival and actually like a lot of rules street rules were in the in lifestyle we come up from a lot of the rules are not designed for you to live a happy life and take care of your family and be in your mm -hmm. family's future and, and make money and really do mm -hmm. progressive things. It's short-lived, a lot of short-lived things, and we praise that and lived and died by it for mm -hmm. years. And I think uh, I'm smart enough to tell a bunch of people that all that stuff ain't right, you know what I'm saying? I don't, so don't. with that, so with that, respect the game. Yeah. The track, respect the game. Yeah. That statement that you just said reminds me of Respect the Game. Yeah. Tell me about that, John. Uh, Respect the Game, I do use the uh, Jay-Z Dead President sample. Right. Uh, I don't know if a lot of young kids know that, but uh, I just wanted to give them that manual, that rule book, just to let them know, like, yo, you uh, running around and you spending money. If that money go, everything will go back to ground zero. Uh, never trust a chick that you got to pay for material. You got to mm -hmm. have materials or you have to have money to keep that girl, that's not nothing you could trust because if money control that, there's a lot of guys. I know a lot of millionaires, that's you know what I'm saying? Uh, don't never count your homie pockets and think that you deserve it. Don't think that just because your homie makes a, a bunch of money that 
I deserve it. Like I hang around billionaires. I can't mm-hmm. be like, yo, if he gave me fifty million, I would be able to buy my son this. No, yeah. I I pride on myself, and I don't depend on another man to take care of my family. I never would. That's growing right. up from being poor. I always been around a few dudes that had money. Right. I never depended on what somebody else had to finance myself. You know right. what I'm saying? Or, or depend on them people and. A lot of self hate and jealousy, and and especially in Philly, I see it a lot. Where you see like a lot of guys, they uh, fall out with their friends, they mm-hmm. end up in beef with their friends, sometimes even kill their own friends over mm-hmm. a piece of paper. It's it's really a piece it of happens paper. happens everywhere though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I'm everywhere. talking about my personal experiences of the mind frame. You know what I'm saying? And that's why, like, even when it come to like rappers and things like that, like uh-huh. I I may be on. Like I'm not responsible for everybody else. When I when I had to get on. Nobody wasn't responsible for me to get on. I had to really? come to this radio station myself. Right. I had to come see the DJs. No other rapper could put me on, you know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and it would have been nice. I, I got verses from some other rappers when I was coming up, and it was like not even really the mainstream artists. It was right. like the guys, uh, the, the the guys that were like coming down a little bit. They wasn't on their highest horse that they could have been on but right. I never prided myself on like yo y'all not making a lane for me and that's the mentality sometimes we get caught up in in our culture mm-hmm. that we could blame it on somebody else and that's not really the way out that's right. just an excuse me that's what I call it nah that's good that's good that you I know that even as DJs y'all gonna get that a lot I ain't blow cause of Cosmic Kev I ain't blow cause of Doc B I ain't blow because of Diamond Cuts no, you can still go on you can still get on SoundCloud too. No, no, no. And 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 right now it's it's more outlets than when you started. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now it's more outlets. Yeah, me, it was only it was <laughs> it was only two different stops you can make and it was probably only six people out of them, two different stops that really right. was effective that could really help you get off the ground and you had to be likable towards them and right. you had to really have talent and you had to Go out your way to put your music mm-hmm, in these mm-hmm. people's hands. You couldn't just be you like, had to put that mind. work in. You yeah, definitely yeah. had to put that. You work know what I'm saying? In. So you can't pride yourself off of that. Just talking about in any situation, right. not even it have to be money. Right, right. I want to talk about the joint with Cardi. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about on me. Yeah, because Cardi is is out of here right now. Yeah, and that record is crazy. Yeah, she flamed that too. Shout out to Cardi. Yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Did did you seek her? So I know. Uh, Y'all had a y'all was cool before because I remember a, a show a while back. I think it might have been at the Fillmore. You bought her out, right? Yeah, I bought Cardi and mm-hmm. Offset out of my show at the Fillmore. Uh, yeah. Offset, one of the guys I've been cool with. Cardi, somebody I've been cool with. Mm-hmm. Uh, she one of the top peers of people in New York. I'm from Philly, and right. Philly and New York really go hand in hand. Always, it's always like Beanie Siegel and how Jay Z was, or Jada right. Kiss and Rockefeller, Dipset. We always stay connected. So you know. It was just that was a simple thing to do, right, you know right. what I mean? She got her own fan base. I got my own fan base. Let's do this track. Let's kill it. Cross Did y'all have bases. a discussion before, or y'all just got no, together? No, actually, I be I, I be around somebody that be around her. His name uh, Brooklyn Johnny, and uh, I know Brooklyn he was Johnny. like, "Yeah, right. y'all need to put one together. Let's do it. Let's get that together." Met Brooklyn Johnny. We was out L A. Oh yeah, yeah. We was out, at what the, was, at the was dinner. B T. We yeah. had dinner at B T. Shout out to Brooklyn we Johnny. We was at Crustaceans, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, yeah, send Cardi this for me. Boom, load it right up. Wow. Boom, it was done. Yo, you definitely got that off. Now, I'm a radio dude. Yeah. The LMA record. Yeah. Incredible. Thank incredible you. I record that. for the ladies. I can feel I can see that gone. You yeah. got a number one now. I'm predicting another number one on that. How yeah. did the LMA record come about? Um uh, LMA Mustard was in the studio the other day, so you know, um, LMA was in New York. I was like, tell her to come through. I got this record I think she could hear. Okay. She came right through, heard the beat, the sample, Beyonce laid it down. That was probably like seven days ago, I think. Really? Yeah, about seven, eight and days ago. That right there speaks to, like you said, you do it for the streets, you do it for the clubs, yeah, radio, and you do it the for women, the ladies. Yeah. yeah, everything all in one. So yeah, it's, yeah. I just think you should, as an artist, an artist should paint pictures. Like, I shouldn't, if I paint pictures, I shouldn't only paint pictures about one topic you know right, what i'm saying you, right. could, you you draw so you could create so i like to create and you know cater to different sounds and and, and different uh content right. now now let's talk about the record that right now got yeah. every everybody buzzing the joint with ross and jay yeah is that your first jay-z feature yeah that's my first actually like of my song i've been on songs with jay-z right. before but of my song yeah 
So how do you feel about it? How do you feel like you, oh, it feel good, you got a you Jay Z feature? Yeah, who like your goat DJ of them all time? Who is your goat DJ of all time? My goat DJ of all time? Yeah. Uh, well, I got a few of them. Uh, Cosmic Cat, most inspired one. I want that mostly inspired you. Kid like. Capri. Yeah, so uh, you would love to do like a a mixtape with yeah, Kid yeah, Capri. Yeah, you Kid and Capri. him scratching on the tables doing your thing. So right. Jay Z is that to me. You know what I'm saying? And recording with the person I always looked up to in music mm-hmm. was a great feeling to start. Him giving up 44 bars was even <sighs> better and. Being able to stand up and last on the track with Jay Z and Ross is a big deal to me too. So you know, it was nothing but a wonderful thing. That a lot of people right. doing a lot of talking about that. Yeah, because everybody's talking about that one. You definitely got that one. It's all. a lot of it's a lot of content on there and a lot of things to be said and a lot of jewels on that record. It's almost like a jewelry store, man. It's a lot of jewels on that record. I've listened to that record like around eight times now. Yeah, like like back to back, like keep yeah, going on, and things. I keep hearing different things like. Wow, but yeah, that record right I there. I just is learned incredible. something about it yesterday. I seen like a meme when he was saying Ho was saying all the things that's free, but I ain't even know he said it was free that many times. Like, right. it was crazy. Right, how he broke it down. Yeah. So let's talk about the Drake record. Yeah. How that come about? Uh, we man Drake recently just came out on stage, probably like what two months ago, a month ago. That we was big. It. I, yeah, I, I just want to say, I know, so that happened in Boston, right? Boston and Philly. We did right. Philly too. I was there in Philly. It happened in Boston for the first time, but in yeah. Philly, I just want to tell you, that was so monumental. Yeah. That that showed so much growth and maturity. And again, like we was having that discussion, I think it's good for kids and the youth in our community to see that. Yeah, it's like, you know, we, we get like a lot of murder here in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. That was full of the. We was here like in the streets with that. Somebody would have died first day. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody yeah. take things so serious when it's really a conversation. You know what I'm saying? We rap and we make money off rap. We both getting money. Mm-hmm. It's not even really like like liable for us to throw our lives away about something so stupid. But in kids' mind, they think that well, where we come from, they think that everything has to go to ten. Everything don't gotta go to ten. And you know what I mean? All we did was what now what. A month, two, three months yeah. later, we making money from it. We, right. We getting notoriety from it, from doing songs and actually bridging the gap. And, mm-hmm. you know, we actually just finished that song two days ago. You know, <laughs> put it on the album. Let's go get it. You know what I'm saying? And So you got some other stuff in the can. If you just finishing records. Yeah, I got like 200 day. songs. Yeah, I got really? To, yeah, I did like 200 songs. I work hard for my albums. Like, it's a lot of songs I got. They're good songs, but I'd rather record and try to pick the ones that make sense. Mm-hmm. And a, as a as a total project, mm-hmm. yeah. So what's what's next for you right now? Because and and I have this conversation all the time. We talk about this all the time. You're big. Yeah. Like I I know you know you're big. Yeah. But you are huge right now. Like yeah. like you just said you you doing CNN. Yeah. You're on Ellen. Yeah. You just dropped the album. So what's next for you? The the, the music, the 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 activism, like. Where, uh, where's your head at? I mean, I got plans on like making a hundred million and being like a mogul and just like really making a lot of money and and doing it for my last name and just being a a, a very important person to my culture. That's all. Okay. That's the main thing. I really got it. I want to. Uh, we already in a reform world and and, and trying to make change and, and doing a lot in that world. We rapping. We making good music. We just shot a movie with Will Smith Company. Oh, hold, 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 stop that! You just shot a movie? Yeah. We What's shot. the movie about? Tell us about it. It's about uh, it's a documentary out called Twelve O'Clock Boys. If you ever seen Twelve O'Clock Boys, uh, it'll actually give you the layout what the movie's about. It's about the bike life culture. It's something okay. I went to jail for. Okay. I don't know how y'all used to hear me. I used to bring my dirt bike out right from across the street sometimes. <laughs> it'd be at nighttime. You'd probably be all about it. Right, right. I wasn't here then. Yeah. Wow, wow. That's crazy. So look, the tour, and you're going, you announced the tour last week, right? Yeah, tour is going on. It starts in February. So, you know, we're going to hit a bunch of states in America. Make mm-hmm. sure you go grab your tickets. Uh, we got two shows in Philadelphia. First show sold out, so the second show in Philadelphia uh, just got added to the tour, so you oh, know. that joint's going to sell out. Yeah, definitely. that joint's going to sell out for sure. I made a decision. I had a decision. Could I do it at the Wells Fargo? Uh, just do two or three shows. I'm like, now, I I'm curious about that. So what what went into that? Because I I thought you should have did Wells Fargo. Yeah, but you you're doing the Met. Yeah, this is out out of the, out of the rip. Like I could still do the tour and still do the Meek Mill and Friends. Right. Two three months later, and, and bring the most of the industry guys back to Philadelphia and throw a big show. Okay, okay. But this time I might throw a festival. I want to do some some 
fun summertime. Yo, that'd be crazy you know outside. Yeah, and good, all that. good vibes, no violence, a lot of fun. Do something for the kids, do some charity too at the same time and really make a movie. Okay, no doubt. I just want to ask you real quick about some of the other features you have because yeah. I, I definitely like the Kodak Black record. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, definitely like the 21 Savage record. Yeah, shout so out to are, 21. Are these people that you specifically wanted to reach out and work with? Like, do yeah. you thought that? How does that how 21, did that come my about? friend, we we kick it all the time. Kodak, I, I met him for the first time when we was in the booth, but, you know, I I like that kid. He go through the same thing, probation. Mm -hmm. He a rising star, small infractions, put him back in prison and things like that, and I always liked his music. I actually was following Kodak before he blew up. Okay. Uh, Before he had uh, Bodak Yellow. What's, what was Kodak's song called? I call his song Cardi's song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got okay styling on the ass. Well, look, I've been a fan yeah. of Kodak for a long time before he, he got, got on. Huge and uh, and uh, I just wanted to work with him and put things together. You know, he came in, jumped on the hook. We made a movie, and that was it. Uh, Twenty one. We got a, a a relationship. Sometimes we hang out. Uh, we bust it up all the time. We gamble all the time as friends, and you know, is it anybody? that you haven't worked with that's out here right now that you got got your eye on that you want to work with uh no i, I just want to get involved with the new i've ever worked with the new guys and uh me and tiara weck from philly got a new song love tiara yeah weck. i love tiara, love tiara weck, weck too i think she's gonna be a, a a big artist in 2019. uh not too many you know i, I vibe with who vibe with me okay. whatever's going on and you know we connect and make the music work all right well listen me Thank you for coming through. Yeah, thanks for having me, too. Shout out to Doc B, too, man. A lot of times, like, uh, it could have been highs and lows. Doc B, you always been rocking. Oh, yeah. Uh, 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock. What time you came on? You come on? Yeah, I come on. I'm on at 12, 5. I'm on the weekend. I'm all over the place. Yeah, but, like, when you're in the middle of your day to day getting started, like, you might be in a traffic jam. You the one was blazing me out. Like oh, yeah, when it was, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I appreciate you because it was time that you was hitting me, letting me know, yo, I'm checking you out or whatever like yeah. that. So I so definitely shout appreciate out to, that. Shout out to Doc B for real, important role in Meek Mill career. Shout out to Cosmic Kev, mm -hmm. Diamond Cuts, the whole Power 99, for real, for real, because uh, – before I was worldwide, before the world knew, like y'all believed in me, y'all showed yeah, me yeah. a lot. Yeah, and we of appreciate love, so. you killing it at Powerhouse too. Oh yeah, of course, as you like, always. always. Do. I wasn't even supposed to go last. Uh, DC, like it, yo, it's your town. Yeah, I know. I just don't like closing out. I always <laughs> feel like if I, I look at it from my perspective, if I go to a show at four o'clock and. I gotta wait till eleven o'clock. My energy will be drained. There's nah, no. But you gotta understand powerhouse, and you know this. Yeah. Powerhouse is different. Yeah. And of course. And you're a different artist. Like they I, they wait and they're sitting on their hands because they know me. No matter who touches that stage. Yeah. When they know Meek is coming. Yeah. It, it's going down. They're not going. They're not going to the bathroom. They're not going to the concession stand. Yeah. They're not doing none I of that. I just always feel like the energy could just be one notch. I'm a perfectionist. Like right. it, it's always great when I'm in powerhouse. I just feel like if I could get you, make you wait four hours instead of six hours, I would want to make you wait the four because you would jump a little bit higher than you would. As I feel season, you, but you know? but you're good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, you're good. Yeah, this you're Philly, this is my hometown, man. They built me, made me, and it's all love, man. So I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do, and if Power 99 involved, my man, ready. I appreciate it. Well, thanks a lot for coming through. Best of luck with everything. Yeah, all thanks right? for having me. You already know, Doc. All right, it's Philly's Power 99. Yeah, let's get it.